Hi, I want to talk about activities and starting a second activity via an intent is really what we're looking at here. So I have an activity. This is activity main.xml and we can see that what we really have here is a button. All we have on the screen is a button and it's got a label go. And if I look at the XML file actually, I can see that that label is given to us by the Android text attribute where I'm pulling a string out of strings.xml uh, called button text. And I can look at strings.xml and see that that button text string is just named button text uh, with a value of go. If I look at the XML file for my second activity, it's very simple as well. It's activity2.xml. And we can see I have a text view here, and it's also got a string attribute uh, or text attribute pulling a string from strings.xml. And the string is TV text. And so if I look at that, I can see that TV text actually just says activity2. So in my Android manifest file, very important, it will not work if all activities are not listed in the Android manifest. So let's look at the Android manifest quickly. Two activities manifest. And I can see that my first activity has a lot of stuff it's got an Android name attribute, it's got a label, and the label is going to be the label that's in the title bar of that activity. It's got an intent filter uh, looking for a main and a launcher. It's got a lot of stuff. We really only need, if we're only going to fire up a new activity, we really only need, or within a single application, I'm sorry, I should have said that. We really only need two things. We need the Android name, and we need a second attribute, and this is really uh, kind of optional. We need an Android label attribute, and we can pull that from a string resource, or we can just type a text in. Uh, so let's label activity2 as activity2. So if we're only going to call up activities within our own application, then we really only need these two attributes defined. The intent filters are for calling up an activity maybe from another application or making an activity that can be launched from the launcher window from Android Acore, the process home that we see. So let's look at our two activities. But this entry for each activity is necessary in the Android manifest file. Otherwise, it will not work. So let's look at activity, uh, activity main activity.java. <clears throat> Again, I have on create here, and then I have a method, a public void method called start activity2, and this is my button handler. So in activity main XML, if I look at my button code, I can see that Android on click, that attribute, has a, has a text value start activity2, and this is the name of the method that the button will execute when it's clicked. So now if I go back to main activity Java, here is start activity2. And we can see here that I have something called an intent. An intent is an intention to perform some operation. And in this case, we intend to start a new activity. So I create an intent by using intents constructor with two parameters, the activity we're coming from and the activity we're going to. I have this activity, which is called main activity. So I use main activity this. And then I have a second activity called activity2, and I use activity2.class. Uh, .class is like this. In other words, it refers to the class of the next activity. And then I call start activity, and I pass it the intent that I just created. And that's as hard as it is. It's very simple to start a second activity using an intent. The other methods here, I have overridden on resume and on pause and on stop in my main activity just to show when things happen in the activity lifecycle. I've also logged out on create <clears throat> as well. If I now look at activity two's code, we can see that I'm logging out the creation. I'm also going to log out the pause and the stop just to kind of look at the lifecycle of both of these activities as they're executed in the environment. So let's go ahead and fire up this app. And I've got my emulator here. And again, there's nothing really all that important except for the button. 
But I want to look at the log statements. Okay. So there we go. Just as we expect, main activity has been created and resumed. I didn't, I didn't override on start, but we would have seen a started message there. Now, if I click the Go button, watch what happens. Main activity gets paused. Activity 2 gets created. Main activity gets stopped. Well, why is main activity fully stopped? Well, remember, it's not destroyed. It's just completely invisible. So we remember from the first series of videos that if activity is fully covered up, then it's going to be in the stopped state. But it went through the paused state. So main activity was paused and then stopped. And then activity two was created. But notice the order. Activity two was created so that it could be displayed as quickly as possible. Now, if I click the back button, let's see. Activity two was paused, main activity was resumed, and then activity two was stopped. And this again is because paused uses a longer length of time and the main activity can be resumed more quickly. And then if I click, of course, the back button, main activity is paused, stopped, and then it was deleted, but I didn't override on delete, so we didn't see that. Okay, so the important thing about this is the intent code. So when we want to start a new activity, we use an intent, we pass the constructor intent, we pass it the activity that we are coming from and the activity we are going to, and then we use start activity, passing it the intent that we just created. Also, in the manifest file, we must list all activities that are going to be called from within our application. Thank you.